Hello everybody, my name is Dayton Moore and I'm the general manager of the Kansas City Royals. I wanna thank you for this amazing privilege uh, to be able to share with you today. Uh, we feel so passionately about the next generation. We have a great heart for the next generation and a great belief in your future. I'm reminded daily that the future it only works for those that believe in it. And I want to encourage you uh, to, to believe in your future and to always expect good things to happen in your lives. And I wanna share with you just seven really basic leadership principles that I've always tried to apply in my life. Uh, I call it organizational harmony. And I think these principles work in every aspect of life, whether it be in your family, your community, your team, your business, what, wherever you are. Uh, if you can apply these principles, I think you'll be on your way of having that harmony and that peace in your lives that we all desperately strive for. And so one of the things that I commit each and every year is to do the following. One, I wanna remind myself to settle disputes quickly. I don't want ill relations with people in my life, especially people that I'm close to. And when I work hard to settle those disputes quickly, it shows that I'm willing to forgive. And forgiveness is such a key element to happiness and success in life. We never want that seed of bitterness planted inside that's gonna destroy our demeanor and give us uh, an improper perspective on life. We're the one that is constantly hurt if we're unable to forgive. So forgiveness is a huge part of that. By settling disputes quickly, you are practicing forgiveness. Secondly, be responsive. Be responsive to people. It just simply shows that you care about them. Thirdly, have an above and beyond attitude. Give people more than they expect. It shows that you're willing to serve them and put them first. And leadership begins and ends with putting others first. Leaders exist to help other people. Value them first, serve others, have an above and beyond attitude. Fourthly, stand up for your people. I found the best way to encourage others is by standing up for them. And when you encourage people, you are motivating them. When they know that you have their back and you're willing not to kick them when they're down, but lend a helping hand when they're struggling, it brings great source of encouragement to their lives and helps them get through the next day. Remain calm in the eye of the storm. Learn to respond instead of react. This is so important. I've learned when emotion comes in, logic often leaves. Prayer is a big part of how I learn to remain calm in the eye of the storm. I'm a man of faith. Some of you may or may not know that, but I rely on my faith to get me through these troubling and challenging times. In fact, we're in a storm right now. And I would just challenge you to try to find proper perspective, seek wise counsel, Deal with this in a way that you can use it to your benefit going forward. Challenges are meant to mold us and shape us and guide us in the future. Learn to respond instead of react by remaining calm in the eye of the storm. Share the glory. You've already experienced a lot of success and you're gonna even experience more success in your life. And when you achieve those great accomplishments, People have helped you along the way. Give others credit, share the glory. It shows that you're humble and people wanna follow humble leaders. And finally, practice one-on-one -on -one communication. Spend time with others in small groups, one-on-one. -on -one. Shows that you're willing to give perhaps your most important commodity and that's your time. Plus you learn to delight in others and you share your heart and you find common ground. Dr. King said, if you wanna be understood, you must understand somebody else. Finally, I'd like to share a quick story about one of the best leaders I've ever been around. His name is Alex Gordon. You know him as our star left fielder, somebody who's accomplished great things on the field, in our community, and leading his family. But Alex's career didn't start out like that. Yes, he broke into the major leagues with a lot of hype and a lot of expectations, but he wasn't fulfilling those expectations. 
And we went to him three years into his career and we told him that we were sending him down to AAA Omaha. We were giving him a demotion. In fact, a lot of people weren't sure that he would ever become a star player. Some people didn't think he'd ever make it even back to the major leagues. And when we met with Alex, I noticed something about how he handled things. He didn't make an excuse. He didn't blame his hitting coach. He didn't blame his manager. He didn't say things like, hey, Dayton, why don't you just trade me? You're not a very good general manager. He didn't do any of that. Alex said, I'll do whatever you want me to do. And I said, that's good, Alex, because we're going to ask you to move from third base to left field. See, we got this young player by the name of Mike Moustakis, who's going to be our third baseman next year. That didn't change Alex's attitude. Alex said, I'll do whatever you want me to do. He showed up in Omaha right away. He went to work. He did what the very best leaders and the most successful people do. They take their situation, their circumstance, whatever event that they're presented with, and they take it as the very best thing to ever happen to them in their life. They take that challenge, that hardship, and they use it to their advantage to shape them and mold them and make them better. Because Alex didn't make excuses and he used that situation to better himself, he became a seven-time Gold Glover, a three-time All-Star, a Platinum Award winner, two-time American League champion, and a World Series champion, and he's in his 14th year here with the Kansas City Royals. He's one of the very best leaders I've ever been around because he didn't make excuses. He accepted his situation, his circumstance, the storm in his life, and he used it to be better and become the champion that he is today. So again, we're so thankful to be a part of this ceremony. We're very proud of you. We wish you well. You are our future, and you're gonna continue to make us so very proud here in Kansas City.